Hi everybody, I hope that you're all doing really well. So today I am back to do an exciting video, a very exciting video for me and hopefully for you and that is going to be my birthday book haul. I did one of these last year after my 26th birthday and I feel like people quite enjoyed it so I'm back to do it today when I'm now 27. How did that happen? I'm 27 years old. I've no money and no prospects. I'm already a burden to my parents and I'm frightened. And yes, I did make a lot of Charlotte Lucas Pride and Prejudice references during the day. And I feel like I'm just gonna have to get right into this video as quickly as possible because there are so many books to talk about today because it's not just books that other people have bought me. Because I went home for my birthday, I went a little bit wild and I was like, it's my birthday, I can treat myself, it's fine. It is not fine, why did I do this to myself? But I am very excited about all of these books that I have received or bought for myself. So I'm just gonna, pile them all into one video, get them out of the way. I don't think I'm going to be able to say too much on each individual book because otherwise we will be here for about two hours and that's that. Nobody wants that. I'm on a lunch break. I can't do that. I'm going to start off with books that other people got me for my birthday and I am so incredibly grateful for all of the wonderful gifts that I did receive. You lot are all so good to me. The first book to talk to you about today is Past Mistakes, How We Misinterpret History and Why It Matters by David Mountain. This was a book that was gifted to me by Aoife over at Pretty Purple Polka Dot, so thank Thank you very much Eva. This is non-fiction I think this is going to be a really poignant read, a really timely read, especially with so many conversations going on in the public history realm about how we interpret history, about statues, commemorations, the kind of people that we should be putting up on pedestals literally and who we maybe shouldn't. Next up we have Anne of Cleves, Henry VIII's Discarded Bride by Elizabeth Norton. I think I'd mentioned previously in my history non-fiction recommendations video that Anne of Cleves was one of the Elizabeth Norton biographies that I have not yet read, so I'm very excited to read this. This was gifted to me by the lovely Karis over at Karis's Corner. In her note to me, she said, I figured there's always room for some more Tudor books on your shelf, so I hope you enjoy this. And that is exactly right, Karis. I would say that Anne of Cleves is one of my favourite of the six wives. She's one that I find very, very interesting, so I am so excited to get to this. Next up from the lovely Shannon over at 155 Books, she sent me Goddesses, Whores, Wives and Slaves by Sarah B. Pomeroy. This is a really fascinating, look at how women through antiquity have been depicted, as well as another book that is going to go very well for her story -thon, which is Bookish Broads, Women Who Wrote Themselves Into History by Lauren Marino. And it's got these absolutely beautiful illustrations of so many different women of history. I particularly love the one of Mary Shelley. So thank you very much, Shannon, for these. Then Sylvie over at the TBR Diaries kindly gifted me Death by Shakespeare, Snake Bites, Stabbings and Broken Hearts by Catherine Harker. This basically goes through all the different deaths that characters have experienced in Shakespeare's plays and kind of noting out any interesting deaths, any recurrent themes within these deaths. This is one that I've been waiting to come out into paperback and I'm very excited that it now is. From the lovely Shah over Thoroughly Enjoyed Books, she sent me Fanny by Rebecca F. John. This is a retelling of Les Miserables by Victor Hugo, all from the perspective of Fontaine. And I'm not sure if this is meant to be a retelling as in it is directly taking from the book or if it is twisting the story in some way. I've heard that this is like a feminist retelling, so I don't know if in this Fontaine might maybe have a happy ending. I will have to report back to you. But of course I wanted to give this a go because it's about Les Mis, which is one of my favourite books of all time. How could I say no? I then also received two books from the lovely, I need to stop saying lovely, I need to have different adjectives for these wonderful ladies, um, but the incandescent, let's go incandescent. <laughs> Anna over at Read to Me at Midnight got me You and Me on Vacation by Emily Henry. I've heard nothing but good things about Emily Henry's rom-coms. I really want to read Beat Read. I know that she's got a book called Book Lovers coming out soon and this just seemed perfect. I'm going on holiday in May so I feel like maybe this will be coming along with me. All about two friends who have been going on holiday for many years together. The last time that they went on holiday however they ended up having a massive argument so now they are reconciling and seeing can they truly get back to how they were or is maybe some romance in the air. Is that maybe why the tensions had been so high previously? And then she also sent me Women vs Hollywood, The Fall and Rise of Women in Film by Helen O'Hara. This is a book that I actually peer pressured Anna into buying when we met up in Oxford. So she had to pay me back for that. And the book really does what it says on the tin. This is about women's experiences through the past century working in Hollywood and the perks and pitfalls of working in the film industry as a woman. It feels weird to say my in real life friends since I have actually met in real life a lot of my booktube friends, but 
but one of my friends who is not on booktube my friend india got me the exhibitionist by charlotte mendelssohn and it's just this absolutely stunning book with actually sprayed edges and something i didn't say to her is that i actually don't really like sprayed edges very often but these just look so beautiful i often find that my brain just cannot deal with sprayed edges especially when they're black i feel like when i'm reading it's so distracting but actually looking at this it doesn't seem like it will distract me too too much i think maybe because it's the same colour as the cover. Maybe that's a loophole for my issue with sprayed edges. But this is one of the books that is on the Women's Prize long list. I am slowly but surely trying to make my way through these books. I don't know if I will actually be able to read all of them by the time the shortlist is announced. Definitely not the shortlist or by the time the winner is announced. But I am very interested to read this and see what I make of it. I also just realised as I was putting my books back that my friend India also got me Cassandra by Krista Wolf. This is a retelling of the Trojan War from the perspective of Cassandra who prophesied the loss of Troy. And no Nobody believed her. Oh, fools! And then my wonderful darling friend Sophie got me a Waterstones gift card, the best thing that you can ever gift a book lover. And so when I went on a trip to York with my mother for my birthday, I utilised both that gift card and the £10 that I already had on my Waterstones card to treat myself to a few books. So thank you, Sophie, for incentivising me to go wild in Waterstones. The first absolutely beautiful book that I picked up was Glass Town by Isabel Greenberg. Isabel Greenberg, I know, is best known maybe for A Thousand Nights of Hero and the Encyclopedia of Early Earth. Earth, well known with her sister for doing beautiful graphic novels and this is one that I've been wanting to read for such a long time this is all about the Bronte sisters not just the Bronte sisters also their brother Branwell and the magical fantastical world that they created when they were children which was called Glass Town and especially because during the week that I was at home I actually went to the Bronte parsonage I thought that this would be such an appropriate thing to buy I also picked up on the buy one get one half price table the appeal by Janice Hallett this is actually going to be the April book for the I should have read that book club that I host over with Shannon and Karis. I thought since I've got a voucher this is as good a time as any to pick this up. And then also on the women's prize long list is The Book of Form and Emptiness by Rufa Zeki. This is one that I'm actually about, I don't know, 80-90% of the way through. I'm almost done with this and I don't know, I feel like I'm gonna have to do a video about all of the women's prize long list books that I read. But this one I'm actually quite enjoying so far. I don't know if it's my favourite of the ones that I've read but really interesting and I actually like this a lot more than I did the last book that I read by Ruth Zeki, A Tale for the Time Being. I'd love to hear anybody else's thoughts on this. But those are all of the books that I got from my lovely friends and now we dig into all of the things that I maybe rather ill-advisedly picked up for myself. Why did I do this to myself? I think I'll start off with the other books that I got from York that were treats from me to me because I just absolutely love the charity shops in York. You can get such great books at the charity shops. So first off I picked up If Walls Could Talk, An Intimate History of the Home by Lucy Worsley. If you are into your history at all you'll definitely have heard of Lucy Worsley. Not only is she a writer of both fiction and non-fiction but she's also one of the curators at Historic Royal Palaces. But I've actually never read any of her non-fiction and I thought this would be a really fascinating look into the home over centuries. Another the one which I think is kind of I don't know it doesn't seem like my typical read but it is a classic a modern classic and that is A Single Man by Christopher Isherwood. This is just a short little book a novella which I believe is all about grief and I've never read any Christopher Isherwood so I thought once again now is as good a time as any especially when it's only £1.50. Some of the women's prize long list books that I actually sent to my house because I knew they were coming out into paperback and I wanted to be able to read them as soon as possible. Those other books which I picked up were this One Sky Day by Leonie Ross. And this is one that I've actually finished already. This is such a weird book and I'm gonna have to really collect my thoughts on it so that I can talk about it in a wrap up. But once again, a really interesting one. I'd love to hear other people's thoughts on this. I also pre-ordered Remote Sympathy by Catherine Chidley. Chid Chidgy? Chidgy? I'm not quite sure how that's pronounced. This I believe is historical fiction. It follows the wife of an SS officer who was moved closer to the concentration camps and apparently she doesn't actually know what it is that he does as a job. She doesn't know what he's working on and slowly but surely she discovers it. Very interested to see how this is handled. And then the last book from the Women's Prize long list that I have so far picked up is The Final Revival of Opal and Nev by Dawny Walton. This is one that I've heard nothing but good things about and it reminds me a lot of Daisy Jones and the Six because it is kind of told like a documentary and it's about this band, Opal and Nev, who collaborate together. This is a book that I picked up at Halifax's local independent bookshop, Book Corner, which is one of my favourite bookshops of all time. Another book that I picked up from there was Bless the Daughter Raised by a Voice in Her Head by Warson Shire. This is Warson Shire's very first like full poetry collection. The chapbook Teaching My Mother How to Give Birth is one of my favourite poetry collections of all time, so I had to pick this one up. I have read this already and it is beautiful. I have picked up and read Still Life by Sarah Winman. This is the one 
that I know a lot of people were predicting was going to be on the Women's Prize long list and unfortunately didn't make it, which is such a shame because this is one of my favourite books that I've read so far this year. Just such a beautiful story of fan family and travel, really makes me want to visit Florence. I'll talk about it much more later on in a wrap up but this is a beautiful book, you should definitely read it. And then even though I picked up so many books for myself, I went into Asda with my mother and I saw that they had a two for eight pound deal on and I couldn't leave these two books. Well, actually, you know, the book that I couldn't leave was Maybe in Another Life by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is being published for the first time in the UK and look how beautiful it is. This is one from Taylor Jenkins Reid's backlist, but once again, they've never been published before. And I think they are slowly but surely bringing these out in these beautiful editions. So I will definitely be collecting them as I find them. And I believe this has a of a sliding doors style where the main character can make one decision and we are following the two parallel lives, the two lives that she could have had depending on what decision she made. So I think that's very interesting. And then the book that I picked up to make up the two for eight pounds uh, was The White Queen by Philippa Gregory. This is once again historical fiction, it's one of Philippa Gregory's most popular and it's all about the life of Elizabeth Woodville. And even though I am a historical fiction fan, I still have never read any Philippa Gregory. In fact, I did have a copy of The Other Bullying Girl, but I ended up passing it along to charity because I just, it was purely because I didn't like the edition that I had. It was a mass market paperback, it just didn't feel quite right. And they've just released The White Queen in this beautiful, beautiful edition, so it was time. I had to pick this up. So this will probably be the first Philippa Gregory that I read. And I do always hear really good things about this, so we will, we will see. We will see. I do have an inkling that I know one of the things that she does with Elizabeth Woodville from watching the White Princess adaptation. And I don't know how I feel about it. Let's just say I think the witchy wise woman trope is being played with in this and it's not my favourite but you know, I will reserve judgment. We will see how we go. I actually had forgotten to show you another couple of books that I bought, not because I'd gone anywhere, but because I wanted to treat myself because it was my birthday. Two books that I didn't think I was gonna get as presents because they are a little bit, a little bit more expensive, but ones that I was desperate to read. First off, we have Letters of Great Women, Extraordinary Correspondence from History's Remarkable Women. This is edited by Lucinda Hawksley. I've talked about this in my Herstoryathon wishlist video. And this just compiles all of the wonderful letters of great women of history. So we've got people like Afra Ben, we've got Lady Jane Grey, Mary Anning. So as you see, it takes the original letter and then transcribes it. Amelia Earhart, just so many different women and I'm so excited to read this. And then the other one that I picked up for myself was Harlots, Whores and Hackabouts by Kate Lister. As you know, I was a massive, massive fan of A Curious History of Sex by Kate Lister. It was one of my favourite books of last year. So when I saw this, I just had to read it. Lots and lots of images that I am I'm not sure that YouTube is going to allow me to show you, but all about the history of sex and sexuality. It is much more of a graphic history, like I say, in the sense that there are photos, not that it is graphic, but I guess it is graphic. It is graphic in both ways. <laughs> and very excited to read this. And then the last three books that I have to show you for this book haul are all books that I bought when I went over to Haworth, over to the Bronte Parsonage. And very appropriately, they all have a bit of a Bronte theme. First off, I thought I should show you the book that I actually bought from the Bronte Parsonage itself, which was Bronte's Mistress by Finola Austin. This is historical fiction, and this is all about Branwell Bronte and particularly his mistress, Lydia Robinson. There were so many different books that I could have got from the Bronte Parsonage. I basically was there and I was like, oh, that. I want that, I want that, I want that. But I feel like it's just an incentive for me to go back. You know, Haworth is not too far away from where my parents live. Now that I've been once, I can go again in the next 12 months. So I picked up this for now, we will see how we go. And I'm very, very excited because every book that you buy from the Bronte Parsonage Museum, they give you a little stamp to officially confirm that this was purchased at the Bronte Parsonage Museum. And I just think that's super lovely. Nice little keepsake. And then randomly in one of the shops, I came across In Search of Anne Bronte by Nick Holland. After I had read Take Courage, which was a kind of part memoir, part biography of Anne Bronte's life, and I didn't really like that book. I had so many people then responding to that by saying that I should definitely read this if I want something that is focused entirely on Anne Bronte. So I kind of filed that recommendation away, but I'd never actually seen it in person until I went to Haworth. And it was just randomly, just one copy was in one of the shops. So I've picked this up. This is really just delving into Anne Bronte's life because I'm a big fan of Anne Bronte. I feel like she is the most underrated of the three sisters. Maybe Bramwell 
is the most underrated of all of the siblings, but I am just a very big Anne advocate. I want to read more about her, so I'm very interested to see what this is like. And then the final book that I picked up, I picked up in a shop called Waves of Nostalgia, and this is basically like my perfect shop. It has beautiful books, it has souvenirs, a lot of them are history-based, a lot of them are West Yorkshire-based, so there's lots of Anne Lister and Bronte memorabilia. They have clothes, all sorts of things, and it's just, like I say, my perfect shop. I could have bought so many things in there, but I restricted myself because I'd already spent quite a lot of money this week. <laughs> restricted myself to the one book that I had really, really wanted, that I'd said if I saw it somewhere, then I would end up picking it up for myself. And that book is Why She Wrote, a graphic history of the lives, inspiration and influence behind the pens of classic women writers by Lauren Burke, Hannah K. Chapman and illustrated by Kayleigh Bales. This is a graphic history about loads of different female writers and the journeys that they took in order to publish. So for example, we've got Jane Austen, you get a little bit of text about her life, and then you also get a graphic novel kind of dramatising her life and how she got to writing. And I just thought this was beautiful. It's very, very similar to something like Bookish Broads, but whereas Bookish Broads only really has a graphic depiction of the author herself, like I say, this gives more of a story with the graphic novel. This is basically if Bookish Broads and Glass Town had a baby, you would get this book. And I'm very, very excited to read this. <sighs> I think I said that for every single book. I'm very excited to read this, but I am. Um, so I'm not even gonna attempt to hold all of these books up. I know that I did that the last time that I did book hauls, especially for my birthday book haul, but there's, there's just way too much. Five minutes later. My lovely TBR that I'd managed to get to, I think it was 39 books I'd managed to whittle it down from from 67, is now definitely more than 39. It's probably creeping back up to 60 again. I will put the number on the screen. <sighs> so I'm gonna have to get reading, aren't I? But yeah, I am just so, so grateful for all of the lovely gifts that I did receive for my birthday. I feel super fortunate that I was able to treat myself also and that I was able to go to so many wonderful places when I was back home with my parents. I went to York, I went to Shipton Hall and I went to Haworth. Like that was a pretty great week and just very excited to see what 27 brings to me. As always do let me know if you've read any of the books that I've spoken about today. Let me know your thoughts about them and just generally let me know what you are reading right now. I'd love to hear from you. I hope you're having a fantastic fantastic day and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks. Bye!